hand it right off to Kathleen, um, who's going to get us started with a hands-on demo. So if you've got materials with you, I think everybody can follow along at home and uh, hopefully learn some cool stuff about bending light along the way. And just don't forget to um, tag yourself, post on social media, and share our hashtags, and maybe we'll uh, get you win a prize. Yeah, thanks for that intro. So yeah, let's just honestly jump right on in here. Let's just get this puppy started. So yeah, we're really just going to be doing a bunch of cool things with light with materials that you should just be able to have mostly on hand. Uh, so I am Kathleen. I'm a student here at Cornell. I'm studying applied physics. So we're going to apply some physics and bend some light around. And we're really just diving right on in here. So this for this one, all you're going to need is Bring myself around. Got my glass of water. And I have this printout with these two arrows. I've got a blue arrow going right and a red going left. If you have this printout, great. If not, we can DIY this. It's going to draw a big old blue arrow. And I have a pink pen. So, really, whatever you've got lying around work just as well. And as you can see, we, I've got the uh, hashtags right at the bottom of the screen. So if anyone feels like, uh, you know, posting pictures of anything that we do in the demos today on our social media, enjoy. So all we're going to be doing to start is we're going to take this image, normal, couple arrows, pass it behind behind the glass of water and look at it through the water glass. So before we do that, this is science. So there we go. What do you think this picture shown on the screen will look like when we view it from behind the glass of water? So we got a couple options. Is it going to look exactly the same? Are the arrows going to flip directions? Are the arrows going to flip from top to bottom? Or are they going to rotate? Feel free to put your uh, guesses in the Q&A and I'll take a look and see what people think. All right, I'm seeing a couple B's, a lot of B's, some C's, A or B. All right. So no, nobody's in favor of rotation, huh? All right. <laughs> That's fair. So. If you have your water glass, feel free to try it out. Otherwise, let's take a look. So we got our arrow pointing right. And all of a sudden, look there. So this doesn't move because it's nice. Which one did everyone see? Gonna zoom. See. Kathleen. Yes. Could you get a little bit closer to the glass when you uh, demo it? Mm hmm. Thank you. Boom. Oh, that's too, that might be too close. Let's see. No, that's great. That's great. There we go. So here's my arrow. Going back and forth. Whoops. And let me see what people are seeing. People, I'm seeing that people are seeing the arrows reversing direction. That seems to be what most people are agreeing on. And yeah, that's what you should see. So let's talk a bit about why that is. We've actually got two major effects going on here. So one of them is that we have this glass of water here. So light is passing through both the air and the water in the glass in order to get to our eye. So we've got our air on the left here and our water on the right in this little diagram. So our light comes in. Now you'd think it just keep on going. I mean, it's just like pa light passing through a window. But actually, when light moves from one material to another, 
it changes direction. So this is actually called refraction. And what's going on is light moves faster in air than water. There's less stuff to bump into. So when it slows down at that interface and when it's at an angle, part of it slows down faster than the rest. So it kind of also gets spun around. And that's why these arrows also look really like distorted when you're looking through the water glass. And I can see in here that someone else has put in the second point I'm coming to, which is that our glass is acting like a lens. So we're going to kind of pretend we're viewing this situation from above. And so we've got our arrow behind the glass, and this little stick figure is our observer. So when light comes from the points of our arrows, it actually, the lens will direct that light towards a specific point. Kathleen? Yeah, what's up? Question that? for you. So uh -huh. I, could you explain your reasoning behind that one more time? We had one attendee who was hoping to have that explanation. The uh, refraction and why it slows and stuff? I believe so. All right, yeah, absolutely. So basically, there's fewer molecules in the same volume of air and, than there are in water. So that means the light can move a lot faster through the air. There's nothing to hit. But because it's coming in at sort of an angle, then it's kind of like if you were driving a car. And one side of the wheels are going to hit the water first and slow down. So say the right wheels hit first. They slow down while the left wheels of your car keep going at the same speed. What's going to happen is your car is going to start to turn. Same thing with our light. So part of the light hits the water first and gets slowed down while the rest keeps going and pivots around, causing the light to kind of change direction as it's entering the water. Does that help? I think so, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Back to our lens. So we've got our glass, which is round. And it will direct the light from the arrow and kind of it does something we call focusing it. So it causes all the light to converge on this one point here. So if we're close to the glass, the light from the tip of the arrow is still up here, and the light from the base is still down here. However, as we move past this focal point, notice how the light from the tip of the arrow is now on the bottom, while the light from the base is on the top. So what actually happens is our image is actually going to flip. So that's why our arrows are flipped. If you want to test this, try holding the glass really close to your face and then passing the arrows behind it. Because of the way my laptop is set up, I might not be able, I might not be able to see it. Let's see how close I can get here. Get this really close. And let's see if we can get this. There go the arrows. And you, you can see the red one is actually facing pretty much the same world. That's actually how we can just flip images just with a glass of water. So really simple. So Vanya is asking, uh, this is a hypothetical question, if we're closer to the glass, and you might have actually just answered yeah, this. Exactly. You, yeah, exactly. You actually predicted it right as I was saying it. Yeah. That's exactly what would happen. It's hard to do because of the webcam situation, um, because then like it's just this giant glass of water. <laughs> um, so it's hard to see, unfortunately, virtually. But yeah, if you just take that glass of water and hold it really close to your face. Um, like this distance, so I've got about a little less than my hand than my finger width. That should be close enough, at least it is with the glass I'm holding. It will depend on the shape of your glass. But yeah, 
that would absolutely mean that you would get the same image rather than a flipped arrow. So we've bent light some. We've bent light by using a lens. But now we're going to kind of create a more creative way to guide our water. And if you notice, this is where I'm going to the sink. So if you need to get to a sink, now would be a good time to do that. And so this is what we're going to do is this is where we're going to need our soda can. And we got our flashlight and we got a pencil. So first, I'm just going to take my soda can and poke a hole kind of in the side of the can towards the bottom. And this actually takes some force, but not as much as you would actually think it is doable. Um, I was actually surprised the first time I punched through, but actually not that hard. And so you can see that the hole is small enough that I can put my finger over it and cover it completely. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this with water around my sink. Let's see if we can angle this down enough. So that when I release, I get this stream of water. Uh, Margaret asks, am I going to show you diffraction? Uh, hopefully, if we have time, yeah, I am going to show you some diffraction. So Kathleen, while you're working on this part of the demo, um, one question is, oh, wait, how did I just lose it? Oh, here we go. What kind of jobs in scientific studies might deal with ideas such as refraction? So basically anything that uses light to look at things. Um, a lot of microscopy has to worry about diffraction and refraction because they want to look at objects that are really small. So they'll actually use light or even smaller uh, waves such as x-rays, and those can get bent by objects or by something in between the light and your object. Um, so they have to worry about it. Um, astronomers who are trying to look at big things also have to worry about um, what diffraction is going to do and refraction are going to do to their images. So. Awesome. Um, so the hole goes in the side of the can, not the bottom. So it's towards the bottom, but it's actually in the sides. So if you can see where my finger is, that's where the hole is. I now have a can full of water, so I'm not going to take my finger off, but the hole is right where my finger is. So. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our flashlight. There it goes which almost decided didn't want to work today. We're going to put it over the top of the can. What we're going to do is we're going to let the stream of water out while keeping the flashlight over the top of the can. So we're putting water into the can, or we're putting water, putting light into the can, letting the water out and seeing where that light goes. So before we do this, this is science. So we don't just do things without predicting what's going to happen. So, We've got our flashlight going in. Is light going to A, just go into the can and bounce around in those metallic walls forever? Is it going to bounce around for a while and eventually just come straight out of the hole? Or is it going to bounce around and somehow follow that stream of water? So I didn't label them, but let's go left to right, A, B, C. I see a lot of people thinking the last one, a uh, couple thinking it might be also the second. Uh, no, no infinite light can, um, which is good. good. That's good physical intuition. Um, it's not just going to bounce around there forever when it's got options of places to go. So I'm um, going to try and do this. It is difficult. And also, this would be a good one to do at home at night because it is easier to see the darker it is. 
So if you can get to your sink late at night, then that will definitely work really well. But I'm going to vanish here. I got my flashlight so you can still see me. I'm going to put it over and cover in as much as I can. Now, things I didn't account for is the light from the computer screen. It's actually kind of bright. Um, but this looks pretty good, Kathleen. What? It looks pretty good. Um, here. I'm going to go actually, ah, this slide's darker. This slide's better. Yeah. Less light. Less light contamination. Let's see. So there is our stream. And if you can see, it looks pretty darn bright. So there is some coming out the side of the hole for sure. But there's also a significant amount that's just kind of glowing around in that light, in that uh, water stream. So yeah, um, I see someone also said it's going to be uh, somewhere in the middle of the last two, and that's probably more realistically what is happening. Oof, right in here. So anybody got some ideas of what's going on on this one? Because we saw we did see a mix of B and C. Um, so, sorry about that. I love my touch screen, except when I don't. <laughs> so, this is actually a phenomena called reflection. But there aren't any mirrors in this scenario, right? Well, when I showed you that first image of light bending when it meets, when it switches materials, I kind of skipped a step. So in this case, we're actually having the light move from the water to the air. So I have flipped the picture from before, but same thing. Light goes in, gets bent, and comes out. But only some of it actually comes out. That's what we call transmitted light, because it gets transmitted through the interface between the water and the air. Some light, however, is going to get reflected. Basically, any interface can be a mirror for light. At most interfaces will reflect at least some, if not all, of the incident light. So when we've got our water stream, that ends up actually acting like a series of mirrors because the light is completely surrounded by water. And so everywhere the light tries to escape the water, part of it just keeps getting bounced back. So some escapes, but a lot keeps going. And it continues. So all the way to the end of the stream. And even as the stream bends, it's still reflecting. So the light actually gets bent too. Um, and this is actually the same kind of basic reflection is used in like, can anybody heard of Fios? Uh, fiber optic cables, uh, internet? Yeah, that's more or less how it works. It's kind of just guiding light along a long cable. So you kind of touched on this, Kathleen, with that example, but um, what are some other examples of things that are happening in light science today and what got you interested in the science of um, refraction and reflection? Um, so basically there's this whole series, this whole kind of area called um, waveguides, uh, which is basically where people are trying to find ways to direct light to go where they want it to go. Um, and that can be using mirrors, it can be using all sorts of materials and shapes and kind of keeping track of how light reflects off of those surfaces and moves within or escapes from those surfaces. And that can be kind of trying to get really anything that needs to get light from where it's made to where it ends up. Um, so again, with like anything that uses x-rays, like for getting it from the source to whatever you need to look at can be a good example. Um, x-rays are basically light, but move, wiggling a lot faster and a lot more energetic. So something like that. Very cool, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions before we get to our uh, diffraction? There's a couple others that I'll ask at the end. Well, actually there is one tricky one. Uh -oh. Don't know if you know the answer to it, but um, an anonymous attendee is, I think uh. what they're asking is, um, when animals like bears who catch fish out of, directly out of the water, this is maybe just a hypothesis really in your answer, but 
how do you think they catch the fish when light refracts? That is a very good question that I can only hypothesize about. Um, I am in no way a wildlife expert, um, <laughs> so I do not know what adaptations bears have to catch fish. I will say the images I've seen of bears catching fish are largely in shallow water, and that's less of a depth of water, so there's just going to be less room for distortion. Like if you're standing in a foot deep river, you can still see the bottom generally pretty well. Um, things get really funky as it gets deeper. Mm -hmm. um, but I can only guess, I'm assuming that probably fish have shiny scales partially to add to that light bending to make it even harder to pin them down. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say I, I have a better guess about how the fish try and get away than how the bears catch <laughs> Okay, that's, uh, that was actually, that was very, I think that's a very valid hypothesis. Um, and then yeah. one more question from Artash and Arushi uh, uh -huh. in Canada. Um, if light bends when transitioning from one medium to another, that means that the light coming from the sun is bending as well when it comes from the vacuum uh, outside of our atmosphere, I guess, into Earth's atmosphere. Um, does that mean that the sun we see is not at the position that it actually is? That's a good question. Um, so part of it is we are so far from the sun that a lot of it actually, that bending angle is gonna be a lot smaller because you can almost approximate angles. At the big distances, you basically start approximating everything as either 90 degrees or parallel. <laughs> um, so the closer you are to the equator center, like the less you're gonna see any effect. We probably see a minor effect around here, but I would say order of magnitude, unless you're an astronomer who is wants the exact position or as exact as astronomy gets. I have astronomer friends and we laugh about how exact their numbers are. Um, for us, most of us is probably not enough to worry about really. Mm -hmm relative to the scale of the solar system. Great. Thank you. Cool. So I'm going to move again because we need a blank wall for this one. So if anybody has their mirror and their CD DVD, we're going to go to our little bit more reflection and some diffraction. Let's we'll split up some light. So I have just a mirror, regular old mirror. And I got a DVD, which I will not be putting on the floor. <laughs> and I have my blank wall. So first, I'm just going to take my flashlight and reflect some light off this mirror. It's shiny. So I don't think anyone's going to be particularly surprised by what they see. So it's this white flashlight and we end up with just this big old white dot and I can change the angles and it kind of changes where the dot is. I can spread it out a little more, make it a little more concentrated, but not much happening. Now let's see if I can do this as well as I did it this morning. So we have our DVD, looks pretty similar to the mirror, right? I mean, it's shiny reflective, you can see your reflection in it. So when I take this and reflect my flashlight off, let's see there. Okay, there we go. Let me get the best. I got a really good one this morning. There we go. You can almost see uh, two rainbows happening there. That looks awesome, Kathleen. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, if everybody's busy at home making rainbows on your walls, send us pictures of your rainbows. It's kind of, it's getting sunnier, but it was kind of cloudy and snowy today and it's April. So like I could use some rainbows, please. Uh, yeah. Hashtags at the bottom, send me your rainbow pictures. <laughs> yeah, make sure you guys do share these activities with us if you are able to complete them. We would love to see how, uh, how it's going and who all is participating. So let's talk about this one. So why? Do we see a mirror? Do we see a mirror? Do we see a rainbow with our DVD but not our mirror? So I don't know if anybody has any guesses in the Q and A. Um, so. 
basically, I mean, they're both flat, shiny objects, right? Well, let's see, I see another response coming in. Disc is not glass. Um, I don't think either of these is technically glass. Um, I actually do not know what this mirror is. It came from Target. Um, <laughs> So they actually could be made of similar of the same material. And that would not actually cause this effect. What's actually happening is DVDs aren't flat. They actually have raised bumps. And that's how the information is actually stored. Raised bumps mean different things than flat areas. And that's how it tells the DVD and the player what colors to show you, what sounds to play, to play whatever movie you're watching. And so basically what's happening is you have light coming in in a particular direction, represented by these arrows. And when it interacts with these bumps, it basically gets scattered in all directions. It goes everywhere and kind of forms these little circular kind of waves of light, kind of like if you dropped a rock in the water and the waves spread out. Same thing with light bouncing off these little pieces. And just like if you were to drop two rocks next to each other, um, what's actually going to um, happen is once those circles meet, they're all going to mess with each other. So like the shapes are going to get weird of the overlapping waves. And that actually causes basically different bright spots and dim spots to appear. And the thing with white light from like a flashlight is it's got mixed all the colors in there. And different colored lights have different wavelengths. That means the peaks of the light are closer together or further apart, but close together for purple, far apart for red. So for red light, you're gonna have bright spots of red and low spots of red in different locations than for purple. And so what the DVD is doing is basically spreading out those uh, different high spots and low spots for the different colors. So the high red spot is in a different location than the high green, blue, purple, et cetera. And it just so happens that they spread out in a continuous rainbow. So that's really how you get this cool rainbow just from a DVD. Um, and actually, if you do some things with lasers or some monochromatic single color light, you can get a bunch of other patterns, like some of the ones I've shown. So yeah, that's really all I have for today. Um, if you want to follow through any of these activities again with some written explanations, there's a, an activity sheet on the website. I'm hoping to add a couple more activities to that with lasers uh, soon, laser pointers, to create some patterns like the ones you see on this slide. But I'll take just, I see I've only got like a couple minutes, but I'll take a couple questions or a question now and I'll be in the uh, Q&A responding offline as well. Awesome. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, this will be available to check out later on the website as well. So if you missed the beginning of Kathleen's demo, feel free to check back in on the recorded video later and try it out. Um.